Hey, what's going on, GHL Mastery and YouTube folks? I had this question come up um, in the Go High Level group, actually, and I've seen this happen many, many times. It's happened many, many times to me. You're running Facebook ads for a client, and the leads are not showing up in the CRM. And so I'm going to show you in this video where to go to fix that. There's a couple of places that you need to check. There's a couple of things that you need to have access to in order to do this. Primarily, you need to be an admin of the Facebook business page, but I'm going to show you kind of the three places that I go every single time. It was kind of ironic. This question came up in the Facebook group, and then that same day, I had to fix it for one of my clients. So I figured, hey, this is a problem that everybody's running into periodically, um, and so let's address that problem and show you guys how to fix it. Now, there's one thing that's really important to understand, and this is happening across the board with high level. Every so often, Facebook changes their API. At least this is what High Level is going to tell you. They change their API, and sometimes you will lose connectivity to the Facebook page. So that's going to happen periodically, which is going to affect your lead forms. It's going to affect your social media posting and things like that. So the first thing that I will always do is I will always reconnect the Facebook business page, and most of the time, that's going to fix the problem. However, Sometimes lead forms just stop working and then you'll be thinking, what the heck? We just lost, you know, 40 leads, 50 leads. Um, and then you got to go and you got to upload the manual. So I'm also going to add to the end of this video how you can back this up with Zapier um, so that this never happens to you again. I, I don't know exactly why Zapier works 100% of the time. Um, so I'm going to show you guys in this how to fix that. Now, if you are watching this live, please let me know that you are watching it live. If you're watching it on the replay, please let me know. And if you find any of this information useful and helpful and you're on YouTube, please like and subscribe the video. It really helps the channel so that we can continue to grow and continue to create GHL masters in the high level community because it's not hard to be that much better than everyone else inside high level. And that's our goal with GHL mastery. So let's dive in and go through a couple of the things that we need to do to make sure that your Facebook leads are coming in to the system. And I'm going to also show you a couple of tools that I use to make this happen as well. So let's go and add the screen share. There you go. Okay. So the very first thing, like I said, that I'm going to do every single time is I'm going to disconnect and reconnect the Facebook business page. So how do you do that? You just click this connect button right here. Um, and then you're going to select the page that you want to connect to this location. So we're going to go with estimator tools right up here, and we're going to connect that page. Now, once the page is connected, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Facebook form fields mapping and make sure that all of the lead forms that I am using are mapped. Now, if they're not mapped, they're going to have a green button here that's going to say map, and you're going to have this pop up right here. Now, if you're using standard fields, so full name, email, phone number, city, um, and those are included in your form, then these will automatically get set up for you. If you have any custom questions, what you need to do is you need to create a new custom field that you can map that question to inside high level if it's not a standard field. So um, if you need a video tutorial on that, let me know and I will record another one. Um, but yeah, so make sure that you map all of your, field, your form fields because if you don't do that, then your forms are not going to come in to high level. Um, so that's step number one. That oftentimes will solve the problem. Now, if that does not solve the problem, the next thing that I want you to do is I want you to go to this URL right here. So this is posted in the comments right here, developers.facebook.com slash tools slash lead dash ads dash testing. What you can do from this page here is you can create fake leads that you can then send to your CRM. And it's also going to give you a little bit of feedback. Now they did recently change this. Um, and the feedback is not as good as it used to be. I'm not sure exactly why they did that, but all you do, you select the page that you want to work with. You select the form that you want to submit. Now, if you just click this create lead button, it's going to create a test lead from Facebook for you. Um, if you want to create a real person, so IE yourself, make sure that your automations are working, that you're getting your text messages and things like that. You can just click this preview form button. Um, and then because I've already sent up this form and sent it out, it's going to say thank you. But you'll actually be able to fill out your Facebook lead form and then submit that Facebook lead form and your contact will end up in high level. But in this case, I'm just going to go create lead. Uh, oh, got to delete the lead. So if you already have done this once, you need to delete the lead. Let's go create lead again. Um, and then you can kind of track status. And this is where Facebook made a bit of a change. So this says failure. 
Um, but I know that it didn't fail because I just got a text message. So we're going to go back into high level and then you can just go to contacts and you will have this dummy lead right here um, inside the system. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. Now, in the event that that says failure and it doesn't work, here's the next thing that you need to check. So you're going to go into your Facebook account. Now you need to have Facebook admin access to that business page. Otherwise this will not work. You won't be able to see it. So you're going to click on your little logo over here. You're going to go to settings and privacy and then click on settings. And then you are going to go to business integrations. Now, if you've ever integrated lead connector or high level before, you should see this right here and you're going to go view and edit. Now, if you scroll through this, just double check to make sure that everything that you want connected is connected. But the important one is pages. You got to go to see all pages and then you've got to select the pages that you actually want this to run for. Um, so I'm going to select estimator tools and I'm going to click save. That should add lead connector access to that business page as well. So this is one that oftentimes gets missed. Um, and so that's where you do it. You just go to your settings settings and privacy, and then you're going to go into your business integrations and make sure that the pages that you have admin access to are connected to Lead Connector. Now, the last place that you're going to go is you're going to go to your business manager. And inside business manager, you've got integrations and you've got leads access. So you're going to find your primary business profile, and then you're going to go over to CRMs and you are going to make sure that Lead Connector is in here. Now that happens from that last step that I just showed you. So once you've connected that um, and you're connected to your own business manager, this app should be here. Um, and then from that point on, this should work. Now, in the event that this doesn't work, I always recommend a zap your backup. And I'm gonna show you guys kind of step-by-step -step how I do this and why I do it this way um, periodically. So I'm gonna actually start from scratch. I'm gonna go create a brand new workflow and we are just going to call this Facebook lead test. And I'm going to show you how we use Zapier to back this up. So typically what you do is you say Facebook lead form submitted. You're going to add the filters and you're going to say inform and you're going to select the form that you want. Now, this is where it becomes really, really, really important that you have your Facebook form fields mapped. If you don't, even if you add the forms here, they won't work. You have to map the fields in order to create the contact. So we're just going to go Facebook lead form submitted. Um, and then you can do whatever actions you want to do. So I'm just going to do a quick update opportunity like so. And we'll just go cold outreach and we'll just go respond it. I don't really care. Contact dot name. We're just going to create that opportunity like so. That's all we're going to do. Now. We're going to go into Zapier, and I probably should have set this up ahead of time um, so that we could do this without having to wait. But here we go. The joys of doing everything live in real time. We're going to go and we're going to create a Zap. And now that I think about this out loud, I probably have to connect my Facebook account to this. So we're going to go Facebook leads. And let's go new lead. Continue. Let's go and add a new connection. Oh, well, that was easy. All right, cool. We're going to go page is, and we're going to look for estimator.tools. There it is. And now if you just leave this to default any form, which for Zapier, I usually use this as a backup. So I usually do leave it as default any form. But if you're using specific workflows for specific campaigns, for specific lead forms, then you're going to want to drill this down um, and create that specific zap. Um, but we're just going to leave it like so, and we're going to continue. Now I'm going to just quickly get some test data here. Do, 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 do. There we go. All right, cool. Um, so we've got that dummy record right here. The form that they filled out was this one right here. So we're just going to continue. Now, the next thing we're going to do is add lead connector and we are going to go add update contact and continue. Choose an account. And which one do we have? There we go. Estimator tools main. Continue. Now we're just going to map all of these fields. So we're going to go full name, phone number, and email. 
Now, what I will typically do at this point is I will add a tag, Facebook lead. So something like that. So something to tell you that this thing came from Facebook. So that's all you need to do. You just need to add that tag. And then we're going to go and continue. I need to just mark this as a lead. One second. Let me find that field. Mark as true. Perfect. Now we should be good to go. Continue. And I'm going to test action. Why not? Why not? Okay. So now you've got your zap backup, but how does this actually correspond to backing it up and getting the lead into your system? Well, we're going to go back into the workflow and we are going to create another trigger. So we're going to go to contact created has tag Facebook lead. This is now your backup trigger. Now, the reason that this works is because these two triggers can fire simultaneously, but it's it, at the end of the day, it becomes a race. So one is going to beat the other one out and the lead is already going to be in here. So what I always add to the end of my workflows when I'm doing this is I add a quick wait step. So just a five minute wait is more than enough because this is going to keep the lead in this workflow so that if it delays the connection between Zapier or it delays the connection between your native integration, they're going to remain in this workflow and they can't be in this workflow two times at the same time. So by adding this little wait step here, what you've end up doing is actually creating a system in which they cannot exist twice in the same place. So this will not fire twice. So that is how we create the backup system. Now I obviously label everything, um, your backup like so. So now you've got your Facebook lead form submitted and you've also got your Zapier backup. And then the most important step at the end of it all is to wait five minutes. Now, the reason that this is important is because obviously sometimes the native integration breaks um, and you want to be able to catch those leads no matter what happens. And so this Zapier backup system and structure inside high level will prevent that from ever happening again um, so that you don't lose leads for your client. So hopefully you found that helpful. If you did, let me know in the comments um, if you're on YouTube. Again, I'd love it if you would like and subscribe. And if you guys want more dedicated help with Go High Level, with Facebook integration, with custom coding, CSS, JavaScript, the like, consider joining our VIP program. It's $197 a month, and we get into your system and help you build your solutions to help you become an expert at Go High Level on the same level as myself and Brendan um, so that you guys can service your clients the best and actually start to charge more and more and more for your services as you grow with the high level platform. So with that, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.